Welcome to this tutorial on the hiding controls in the DaVinci Resolve Inspector. We're going to dive into the Fusion page. I've been playing with uh, presets for layouts recently, so this is sort of my beginning layout. I'm going to bring in a background node, and that is going to generate my composition straight away. But with this background node, I want to come into the Inspector and drop the alpha to zero to make it transparent. Now I am going to name these things as I go along and that's why I've put chapter markers down below so you can jump to sections that you're really interested in. Next I'm going to add another background node and I'm going to connect this up to the first background node and that will generate a merge. Now this background node is going to be my background colour that's behind the text. So I'm going to bring in some text next and then we're going to connect that to this merge so now we've got our text on top of our background we'll come into the inspector and let's type something in the text we've got some text in the text box however the background is the full background and i don't want that i want the background to just be behind the text and i want it to stay with the text wherever the text goes i want it to be responsive so if i change the width of the text and what's in that box it goes with it and i've actually already made a control if i press shift and space and type in text mask then it brings in my rectangle one which is my mask and you'll notice in the inspector it's already got some expressions and controls in this is just going to save me some time if i connect this to my merge then now what i've got is a background that is responsive to the text and here in the inspector, I can change the height and the width of the padding. We're going to use these controls for hiding. So we're going to use the extra controls and we're going to hide them because once you've set your padding, you may not want to see these controls anymore. And it's just to demonstrate how to hide some controls in the inspector. Now, next stage, I'm going to need a checkbox for this. This works with any control and you could also use it w with any parameter so you could say if the size of the font is less than 0.08 then hide the control or not you can do that we'll probably do some short videos in the future to show you how to do that but we're just going to do this on a checkbox because the principle is the same so let's add a checkbox to text one i'm going to right click on text one and select edit controls in the top where it says name i'm going to give it a name and that's going to be hide controls and then we've got lots of options of where to put it in the page now because i'm going to use this in a macro then i'm going to leave it in the user tab because i actually want it to be in the top of the controls tab but there's no controls tab here so i'm going to leave it in user um i can uncheck animatable because i don't need a keyframe on it so i'm going to make it passive which means it doesn't render i'm going to have a default of zero which means it's unchecked by default and select integer so it's either zero or one and i'm going to give it a range of zero to one and i'm going to make a checkbox and the width i'm going to have it 0.5 and that is half the width of the inspector so it'll sit in the top middle of the inspector click ok and we've now got our user tab and we've got our hide controls right at the top ready for our macro i'm going to rename my nodes that's going to be m1 because of my snippets this is going to be m2 because i can this is going to be my background color and the rectangle can be my next mask and that's this bit what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a macro but I'm going to pause the video because we've done macros in an earlier video. So rather than repeat myself, I'm now going to turn this into a macro. I've now created a macro and we've got the controls here in the editor. But I need to change these controls and do some work with these controls in the code. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And this is so I can work in VS Code and Fusion. Now I have quick access pop-up installed, so I can just come here and go straight into my folder with my extra controls. And it opened on the other screen as it always does. And now we've got the 
code inside Visual Studio code. Now this code's quite long. If we go down to the bottom, it's 265 lines long. And I want to work in both the top and the bottom of the code. So in Visual Studio code, I can just easily split the screen and I've now got exactly the same code on both sides of the screen. On the right, I'm going to collapse where it says inputs. That's everything in the inspector. Outputs, because that's always the last node before media out. We've then got our text one node, which is just here. And under here, you can see we've added the checkbox hide controls. What I do, I always put my code in M1. You can put it in other nodes as long as you refer to that node, which we've done in the previous video. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add a label. And I'm just going to call that label 01. I'm going to give it two controls, which is those two controls that we are going to hide. Hide this up. And then in the left hand side, which is the inspector, I'm going to come down to the bottom of the inputs. So here, input 17 and input 18 are our controls we want to hide. I'm going to pop the label there and you can get rid of the name. It doesn't matter if you've got the name or not, but it needs to be on the correct page, which is the control page. In the inspector, I've done something wrong because I haven't got the code. What have I done wrong? View info. Ah, done this before. I didn't put under here user controls. When you do any editing inside the edit controls tab, then it will generate this user control section for you. And now we've got a label here. It's got nothing written next to it and it drops down. So what we want to do now is just hide this label but connected to our checkbox. So I'm going to move the checkbox to the top of the inspector just so we can see it for this um, demonstration. And then I'm going to show you how to hide this and have it work on this checkbox here. So back into Visual Studio Code. There's a couple of ways we can do this, but I'm going to do it the way that you can see what I'm doing inside the inspector because we can do it just by doing the code and when we go back it works but I want to show you why we're doing what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is move the checkbox to the top of the inspector. So here we go this is the checkbox hide controls and I'm going to cut that all the way to the top and just in underneath inputs ordered I'm going to paste that in. That's now going to give us the checkbox hide controls at the top of the inspector and by default it's off which is going to mean have this open so we can see the controls. Now don't panic. I know this is just a label without a name, but we're going to hide the label so the controls look like they're just disappearing. It's quite magical. And once you've done it a few times, it's incredibly easy. I'm coming back into my M1 node because everything I'm going to do is in the node where I've placed the label. That's important. So if you're using a different node, then what we're going to do now has to be in the node that you've put the label. The thing to make a, a mental note of is the input number. So input 12 of the instance, which is the checkbox, because what we're going to do is we're going to set an expression that checks what input 12 is and then hides or shows the label. Clear as mud, isn't it? Let's go into the merge. And if we come down to performance depth merge, this is an input. So anything input here is the controls or defaults or settings parameters that we've put inside the node. So this always appears in a merge and I can just change this to label 01. Now you've probably seen this before where label 01 value 0 means it's closed and value 1 means it's open. However, we're not going to do any of them. I'm going to save that so I don't lose it. We're not going to do any of them. We're going to put an expression in there. So let me show you that expression. If I come to my expression builder and I open up, I've got here a uh, label hide. So well, this is the if statement for opening and closing the checkbox. However, it's not called checkbox. So I'm going to copy this if statement and then I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. And here, what I need to do is to change this value to the word expression. The DaVinci Resolve knows we're going to get expression. Where the zero is, we need to put parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, 
a tongue twister, isn't it? I'm going to put the expression. However, checkbox is just a placeholder and I need to change that for input 12. So what I'm saying is if input 12 is one, then close the label. If it's not one, have the label open. So if it's ticked, close it. If it's not ticked, open it. I'm going to go back to DaVinci Resolve and show you where we are so far. So now where we are is we've got the controls showing and the checkbox not ticked. So we're not hiding the controls. If we tick this, it closes that label. So now we're at the stage where the checkbox closes the label. We just need to go one stage further. And that's to come into the M1 node. And right at the bottom, what we want to put is IC underscore visible equals false. What this is saying is, is this control, it can be any control, you can put this line in most notes, is the label visible or invisible? And if it's visible false, then we can't see it. So if I save that out, and now you can see, we've got the controls at the bottom visible, but no label. And then if we come to hide controls, those controls are hidden and we can change the checkbox as we see fit. And that's it. You now know how to hide and show controls in the DaVinci Resolve Inspector based on a checkbox control. You can use this technique to declutter the inspector and only show the controls that are relevant. Let's start with the background node. Background node is a very important and popular node. It has several functions. Its primary function is to supply color to the next node. So we can come into the inspector and we can change the color, which then affects the next node. And in this case, it's affecting the media out. You can also have a horizontal color palette where we can change the color to horizontal or we can have vertical color palette we can also have four corners so we get lots of options here and under here we've got gradient so this will supply color to the next node but also you want to think of the background node as your canvas i'm going to come over to image tab and i'm actually going to rename the node to canvas and this is very important inside DaVinci Resolve Fusion specifically. It works differently in the standalone version. But what this is doing is bringing the resolution of your timeline into Fusion. And that is the size of your canvas. So in the inspector, you can see that I'm working on a 1920 by 1080 timeline. We can change this once we brought it in. But just what I wanted to show you was very easily why it's important. DaVinci Resolve Fusion is resolution independent. And what I've got just up here is a loader node with a PNG file in. If I put that file into viewer one, you can see that the resolution for this PNG is 3816 by 3101 pixels. If we pipe this into the background, which is our canvas, so we're bringing it in with a merge, what you'll notice on the second viewer is this is 1920 by 1080. So our PNG is a lot larger than our canvas, our timeline. One of the advantages is that in here is still all the information on the outside. What we can do is come into the merge node and we can shrink this because we've still got all that information inside this node which is the loader node and we can use all that information but the background node is just the canvas and i highly recommend using the background node as a canvas to contain all your assets and elements that you add into your composition to that timeline